What's up, guys? You know who it is. It's Kurt Ninja MMA. Make sure to hit that like button for me, that subscribe button if you are not, and let me know in the comments what you think about this matchup. Now, I know I say this, but I'm going to try to keep this one short and sweet, <laughs> you know, shorter and sweeter than I normally do. We got an uh, interesting matchup here, Jack Della Maddalena, fighting out of uh, Perth, Australia here. Uh, he's 25 years old, 5'11", 170 pound division, of course, and he is fighting against Emiv, man. Uh, Ramazan Emiv. Interesting matchup. Now, Jack Della Maddalena is the favorite. And I do feel, I mean, that, that's not surprising at all. Uh, let's talk about them a little bit. If you go back and watch their tape, I mean, look, you know, Jack, <laughs> Madalena, when you just look at him, you can tell he's a fighter. You know, he's got the, the broken nose there, or the nose that has been broken, uh, you know, more often than I'm sure he likes. But, uh, you know, it shows that he's, he's, he's not afraid to get in there, and it, and it reflects his style. Right? He's got 11 wins and two losses, uh, his wins, nine of which come by uh, KO. He's got one submission and one decision win. His loss is only two, and uh, one is comes by KO or TKO, and the other comes by submission. Uh, you watching his stuff? Uh, you know, I, I like what I see, man. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I think I'm just going to tell you straight up before I, I, I don't want to get too long-winded here. I'll tell you. I, I do think I, I can see why he is the favorite. Uh, I already mentioned that, but if you go back and watch his Pete Rodriguez fight, I mean, look, he got the, you know, in the first round, he got that uh, TKO punches, right? Frank Trigg, <laughs> that referee. Let's go like a, a former fighter, right? Going there and yeah, stopped it because um yeah he got him out there it looked really good. I mean I liked his uh his offense looks really good. He'll get in there and I like the fact that he throws when he throws he throws in combinations and he actually tries to get back. He'll lean back. He'll kind of he'll hit you get out of range and come back into range. You know he's kind of he has that uh, he moves his upper body well to get uh, to do that uh, good head movement as well. Um and then you look at him uh, before that on the Dana White's Contender Series against Angelusa and Lusa was uh, Lusa was coming in there all very. Uh, Guns blazing. I like the fact that. I like the fact that Madalena didn't lose his cool. Right, he was like, "Okay, you want to get in a firefight? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll throw hard with you. I'm, I'm happy to throw down." Uh, but he was, you know, very uh, methodical, for lack of a better word, in his approach. Right. So, and yeah, I mean, he got it. He got the, you know, he got the decision. You know, it was decision. Uh, and of course, before that, he's fighting in promotions like uh, Eternal MMA, and he was winning by you know KO. If you look down his list, right, KO. We got TKO punches again in internal MMA and before that as well, you know, against, uh, it's not he's like he's winning bad competition, but when you see that, when you see him fighting in promotions like internal MMA and a cage warriors, you want to see these guys. I mean, that's why he got the call, right? That's why he got to get on Danny White's contingencies, right? When you go in, out there and KOing these guys, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it just looks good, right? So, I mean, you know, he's fighting guys you know, with, with decent records as well. I mean, look, I mean, for goodness sakes, he came in round two. Uh, you know, Glenn Pettigrew, that's from Australia as well. Like I said, this is in uh, May. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he KO'd him. And it's not like this guy has no... Uh, let me look at his record. Look, he's got seven wins, you know, three losses. I mean, I went back and watched a couple of the fights, uh, internal MMA fights uh, online, what I could find. And yeah, I mean, we, we know his, his story. We know how he fights. Uh, I like that uh, Madalena, too, he'll go... He has. He's kind of uh, scrappy on the ground as well. He's. I don't think he's. he's one to really get dominated on the ground he'll find a way to uh kind of like you know maybe he'll he'll kind of fake a he'll throw up a, like maybe a, a submission attempt he kind of uses it more to get to his feet i mean his bread and butter he wants to go there and box you up um let's talk about his opponent a little bit here ramazan emiv now with ramazan emiv like uh again he's he's 35 so he's going to be a much older pretty much a 10 year age gap here um he's five foot ten so slightly shorter and uh yeah of course fighting at the welterweight division uh 170 pounds uh he's got 20 wins and five losses his wins uh, can be bro broken up as such. KO, or he's got three uh, KO slash TKOs. Uh, seven submissions, which is not surprising. And a tense decisions. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, if you go back and watch tape, I mean, yeah. I mean, th this makes sense. This is exactly <laughs> what I would expect. Uh, his losses, as far as losses, he, um, he has three decision losses. One submission loss and one KO TKO loss. Uh, got a good chin. I mean, uh, when you go back and watch that one, uh, Danny Roberts' most uh, recent fight, he lost it. Yeah, uh, he got a split decision. That was an interesting one. Yeah, uh, Danny Roberts. And actually, I really like. I, I think this fight really gives you a good idea of how the uh, how the uh, fight against Mandalena will go in a way. I mean, you can kind of take away from him because, uh, of course, uh, Danny Roberts mostly wants to box, right? He's, he's also going to be, you know, the longer reach, you know, taller guy, lankier guy. I mean, if you see the build, uh, and yeah, he wanted to box with them, but uh, it's interesting because, of course, when you have Amiv, you have to be worried. You know, he's a you know. Dagestani guy, you know, of course, we think, okay, he's going to have these, we think, okay, he's going to have the uh, the great wrestling, and he's going to be, uh, you know, okay, decent enough on the feet to 
working the takedowns and stuff. He's going to, you know, smash these guys. No, no, no. That's just a narrative. You can't have to go watch and <laughs> go look at fights. I don't want to be, no disrespect, because these guys are, these are professional MMA fighters. I know, sure, they kick my ass. You know, this is what they do for a living. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, come on, that's obvious. I'm just saying, but, so I don't mean to uh, give disrespect. When I say that someone's not as high level, I mean within the UFC, within the, you know, the, the highest level of promotion. I mean, that should come across. Everyone should know that. I'm just saying, I don't know. I don't want to get any hate. Like, what the hell is this Curry Ninja MMA talking about, man? Curry couldn't fucking last two minutes with these dudes. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I get that. I'm just saying I, he is, he's like the, he's like the, just the base version of, of, uh, of the Dagestani fighters, I guess I want to say. Like, he's not, you know, he's decent enough. He kind of mixes it all in, but he's not, he's not, I don't know. It's nothing to really write home about. I, I'll just, you know, to put it that way. When I go watch some fights and stuff, I mean, I remember, I don't know why it stuck out with me. Uh, I remember the Rocco Martin fight. That one kind of stuck out in my head. I remember he was fighting that. It was kind of, you know, uh, Ram- Ramazov, like, he, he will, he will go for takedown. Like, what I like about him is that he, Fights as you expect, he will make, you know, he'll mix in the, his shots, mostly kind of boxing in there to, to get into range and kind of get a, a takedown. And uh, he'll kind of rinse and repeat, he wants to kind of, he wants to mostly decision you, or if he has, if you are not, if you just don't have a, a ground game, he'll try to go for the sub as well. I mean, he, he throws it out there, like I said. But uh, against Danny Roberts, I think, it was a back and forth fight. He was actually outlining, I think, the last round there. Uh, I mean, it was obviously, Roberts was kind of winning because of, he was more dangerous. He was he would throw with more intention, like knees up the mind. You know, when he would close when they close distance and he tried to get a takedown. If it couldn't be, the takedown could not be completed. Uh, Roberts would have like a nice little Muay Thai kind of clinch and, and uh, go land with some knees. You know, he'd try to throw something up top. Uh, like I said in the beginning, he, uh, I would say, I mean, he was winning that winning that first round. But then as as the uh, fight went on, I think, uh, Emi was like getting a little less less uh, effective with his grappling approach. And, you know, Roberts threw up some subs, too. Mostly just kind of, just something to threaten, you know. And I do believe, I believe that Jack, Madalena will actually, he'll be like that. I think Roberts proposed, but I think he'll have more success than Roberts did. Roberts won on a split decision. I, to be quite frank with you, I think Jack, I think Madalena could get a unanimous decision or a, a KO, possibly a KO, TKO in here. I don't think he's going to sub him. And I don't think, I think, uh, I do think that, Ramazan will get a takedown. He'll, he'll be able to get it. But I think uh, Jack Delina, Madalena will be able to get throw, He'll throw some uh, subs up just enough to kind of wake his way back up and kind of uh, and, and throw with more heat. I think he's very composed in there, which I like. And uh, I think, like I said, I, I, it's kind of tricky because Madalena, I think, is maybe a good parlay piece. Maybe it's a smaller parlay. Like I said, it's up to you, as I say, if you want to be more degenerate with it. I think it's good. But uh, uh, I would say, you know, I like the two leg parlays, you know, two to three max, you know. I think that's maybe one of them there. I think uh, if you actually look here, I have on screen, if you look at the odds themselves, uh, yeah, I, I think it's kind of juice. Like he was, well, depending on the book, uh, yeah, Mendeley is like around minus 160 around and, and Emiv is, uh, you know, plus 140 uh, underdog. So I think the over 1.5, 1, over 1.5 rounds, over one and a half, you know, I think minus 350, yeah, I could see it. It's just that the only thing with that, like, who knows? Maybe uh, Jack. I mean, he's patient. He could. We could find that. Uh, he could get that TKO or KO in that second round. So I, I'd be a little iffy about that. I don't like the unders in that. Uh, I do think maybe. I think to sprinkle on. I, if you see right here, Mandalay wins inside the distance. So it's like plus you know two forty plus sixty. I mean plus three hundred in some books, right? Uh, so far I see. I think that is worth a sprinkle, maybe. You know nothing. You know maybe just at least put like a half a unit on there or something, just in case. You know I, I just. Uh, if you wanted a hedge, I just, I don't really think, uh, I don't think Emiv is going to really have much success. I think, I mean, like I said, it, it's not going to be, I think because of his style, he will be, you know, he'll, he's smart. He's not going to stand there and just try to trade with, uh, Medellin. We know how he's going to fight. That's the good thing about it. He's going to try to go to get takedowns and stuff. And, you know, I think that could uh, neutralize some of Medellin's game, you know, maybe kind of stop his offense from going. But I do think that, no, I think uh, as the fight goes on, I think he, you'll see he'll defend the takedowns a little more, have a little more success on the feet, and then we're going to see the, the, the fight really shift big for Madalena, I think, you know. So uh, I, I think, yeah, that, that's a play for me, I, I would say. I mean, Madalena, I like it. I mean, you know, I, I mean, you're looking for value, too. I think, hey, that's, that, that's not too juiced of, a, of, of odds, I think. I mean, look, yeah, Madalena, I think and if you want to look, look at a parlay calculator, you can even look at the hedge calculator if you're feeling like, I don't know, maybe just in case. You want to put Emiv by decision just in case. That's fine. But, I, I, you know, 
I honestly the play here I gotta I gotta choose Madalena and I think yeah I think he's gotta get I, I that's him for sure I would even sprinkle on the uh, KO TKO or in, inside the distance like I said inside the distance you know I'm mean, look at that Madalena inside distance like plus 300 like I said plus 265 plus 240 plus 200, you know around that range you know plus two you know 40 to plus 300 range so I think that's worth a sprinkle um but yeah, man, let me guys know what you think, man. Remember, like I said, like and subscribe if you have not. <laughs> I think, you know, try to get in, in, encourage me to get more content out. And yeah, like I said, good luck with your bets, man. Enjoy the fights and uh, peace out until the next time.